Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Grumman Pilot's YouTube channel. And today we're going to look at some GAES, that's Grumman American Engineering Service Reports, done by the original factory on our airplanes, basic structures, fuselage stress, a lot of fun stuff if you're interested in that. So stay tuned while we go through the reports for you. We would like to ask you please subscribe, hit the like button, and hit the notify to stay current with our content. Now, the other day on the Grumman Gang, I went ahead and put out a list of all the reports I had found. I was going through some of the stuff from Ken Blackman's shop, including reports and service manuals and stuff, and came across these. And these were donated to Ken. They were by Van Swafford, and he was an, um, an acoustical and aero engineer for Gulfstream American back in the 80s, and Ken got these about 1984. But there you go for an AA1C basic structures report. You can see from the thickness how much stuff that's actually in there. And there's your Tiger basic data report. And it looks at your basic structures, how things are put together. And the funny thing about these reports, they were done by um, Grumman American back in the 70s and as you can see right there from looking at the photocopied table of contents it's all handwritten uh, there's there were no word processors back in the day uh, you had a typewriter you had some computer printout but basically this is what you had a form and you did it all by hand so they cover a lot of stuff in there and they re, they reference a lot of FAA to other technical reports so as you can see we have quite the bundle of them now again it's not technical reports for everybody but here you go here's the engine mount and fuselage attachment uh, substantiation report and when you read that report and you look at the torque loads and everything else the Yankee all the way up through the Tiger you could actually hang a 750 shaft horsepower turbine up front and the airplane will stand the structure of uh, the structural stress of that engine up there even with the motor mount good to know and there's a paper right there signed by van going to Ken as he again hand wrote a note to send to Ken to let him know about these reports that he would had copies made and was sending to Ken Blackman to put in his archive of material that Ken had on the airplane and there's his business card going by everything's divided into sections it's well organized and again if you know engine mount analysis so this is where you can 1974 so you could put a really big engine up front uh, I don't know if Fred Kakosta knew about these or not but again we have these and our plan is to go ahead and take these reports and we're going to scan them in as PDFs and then um, if I can't scan them in because some of them have longer um, documentation like a pullout for a schematic, I'm going to have to get those large format scanned somewhere and put together to get the whole manual in a one piece PDF. But, you know, there'll be some cost involved in that. But that information will be available for those who might want to read it. Um, if you're having trouble sleeping at night, ladies and gentlemen, you might want to take one of these reports and uh, try to read it they can be quite interesting I'm told but anyway as you can see there's quite a bit of information in these reports and they cover a wide variety of topics and it's good information to know especially if you're thinking about any kind of modification to our aircraft now I think I even put a table of contents on the Grumman gang the other day as a show as a analyze stuff what did you need and then I also found copies in Ken's information on a um, Jimmy Collier STC so we have all the information for one of those as well as right here a manual that shows you everything you need to do to convert an early model traveler to the later model traveler nose baffles and baffle seals it's everything you want to know and in this manual that Ken had for the changing the traveler nose bowl and all of that, 
He even included a section on instructions for continued airworthiness that you need to have so that when you go to the FAA to try to get a modification or a signed off 337 to do this to your airplane, then you've got all the information you'll need that'll make them happy. So it speeds the process of getting it done for your aircraft. So ladies and gentlemen, he had quite a bit of stuff. And as I mentioned earlier, here's the 0320 um, two place FTC that Jimmy Collier did back in the day. Ken had a copy of it. I bought an airplane that had one on it. And um, here you go. Fletch Air now sells this, and there's a variety of engines you can get for it. But uh, the 0320 is probably the one that most people do, either the straight mount or, if you can, the dynafocal mount. So we hope you found all this information and these manuals of the technical information and analysis of our aircraft useful and informative. Get in touch with me if you want to know more. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day flying your Grumman.